I think the freighter fleet and, and our main deck capacity has been a challenge, primarily uh, because of the well-documented delays in, in delivery of new freighter aircrafts. Um, you know, on average, we're seeing a delay of four to six months uh, on our freighter fleet. Um, you know, the orders we have with Boeing outstanding. So to to mitigate, um, you know, impact of those delays on our growth plans as well as our commitments, we are not currently uh, flying uh, three leased 747 uh, on ACMI. And on top of that, we've got the 11 777 freighters. Uh, and we are looking to add two more 747 uh, on ACMI um, imminently. Uh, but absolutely, e-commerce, of course, is now a major component um, in terms of global air freight volumes. Um, you know, a lot of, of course, uncertainty around, you know, is it going to stay? Um, you know, will it perhaps disappear overnight someday? Um, you know, I think, um, you know, the opinions are are, are different uh, depending on who you talk to. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a big significant component now in terms of, um, you know, capacity requirements out of especially constrained markets like China and, and Hong Kong. We are bringing you a new season of Conversations, a video interview series from Air Cargo China in Shanghai. And with me in conversation today is uh, Nadeem Sultan, Senior Vice President Freighters and Cargo Planning at Emirates. Nadeem, great to have you for this conversation. Happy to be here, Raji. Always a pleasure. Nadeem, you were uh, speaking at the ISTAD Freighter Forum uh, last week in Dresden uh, on wide body freighters. Uh, how optimistic are you about the proposed two wide body production freighters in the making um, from Airbus and Boeing in terms of its timelines and what is it that Emirates is looking for in the new generation of wide body freighters. I also know that Emirates has not placed any order for any of those two production freighters or new generation freighters. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so it's true. But we're looking at obviously uh, the next generation of freighters, um, both the Airbus 350 and the 777-8F. Um, in terms of timelines, I think realistically, uh, 2028 and, and beyond um, is probably the earliest that we would look at inducting those aircrafts. Both aircrafts are slightly different um, in terms of capabilities. The Dash 8 is a little bit more payload, uh, but obviously payload and range are the two main factors to start with. Uh, but then we're also looking at um, your technology um, in those freighters. Um, you know, what new features are, are both manufacturers offering? Um, you know, based on that, we're going to make a decision and I expect probably before the end of this year, uh, we will have a firm decision and hopefully an order put in place uh, to secure main deck freighter capacity for 2028 and beyond. Will you look at both both the freighters? Potentially. So we, we obviously have, uh, you know, we, we've ordered the 777 as well as the 350 passenger variants. Yeah. Um, so obviously, you know, when you're deciding on you know, on freighter aircrafts, then um, you look at, you know, crew commonality and maintenance and all those things. And um, yeah, from that perspective, we're we're easily able to operate both freighters. Um, and I would say at this moment, um, you know, both is, is an option, uh, but, you know, the, I would say the economics and sort of a bit of network modeling will, will sort of, you know, give us the ultimate answer in terms of what the right mix is for Amherst Sky Cargo. What else did you hear at the, at the Freighter Forum uh, by ISTAD and Dresden last week uh, in terms of future of freighters, uh, particularly given that uh, the nose loader 747 is uh, as given it's still operational for another 20, 25 years, but no more production freighters of 747. Yeah, I think the, uh, so there was definitely conversation or concerns by, by some people around the, uh, the lack of nose door capabilities in, in the next generation of freighters. Um, I, I fully agree. I think, you know, the, the 747, uh, 400, but, you know, the Dash 8 probably at least till 2040 and, and probably like maybe a little bit beyond will fly around. Uh, but I also believe that if, if the demand is there, i.e. if we're shipping type of cargo that requires that capability, then at some point, um, you know, somebody will come up with an engineering solution for, um, you know, either the 777 conversion program or, or a different platform to offer that capability, i.e. no loading. So whilst at this moment, um, you know, there is a concern there, it's not really an immediate problem since we will have an aircraft capable, you know, to do that for the coming 15 to 20 years. Beyond that, if there's still a need that I'm sure, you know, some engineering solution will be brought up on uh, in one of these conversion programs. Bring us up to speed with your uh, current uh, fleet of freighters. Uh, and I believe you still operate a couple of 747 uh, on that lease. Yes. Yeah. So I think the freighter fleet and, and our main deck capacity has been a challenge primarily uh, because of the well-documented delays in, in delivery of new freighter aircrafts. Um, you know, on average, we're seeing a delay of four to six months uh, on our freighter fleet. Um, you know, the orders we have with Boeing outstanding. So to to mitigate, um, you know, impact of those delays on our growth plans as well as our commitments, 
We are not currently uh, flying uh, three leased 747s uh, on ACMI. And on top of that, we've got the 11 777 freighters. Uh, and we are looking to add two more 747 uh, on ACMI um, imminently um, to take our ACMI freighter fleet to five and then uh, you know, the 11 777s uh, that we operate. When will you inject that capacity into the fleet? Uh, potentially as early as August. Okay, so yeah. basically preparing for the the last quarter of the of the, uh, the peak uh, season. Well, it's it's more, I guess, securing long term, uh, um, you know, sort of main deck capacity. Um, you know, the, it's the timing. You know, it may seem like it's it's for the peak, but in essence, these are long term commitments that we're entering into for you know long multiple years. Um, and you know, I think you know we at Emirates see that. Um, you know, the cargo volumes are continuing to grow. Um, and yes, you know, it's always been uh, yeah, you know, coming with ups and downs. But, you know, realistically today, if you wanted a brand new freighter, you're looking at a four or five year uh, okay. wait. Um, so to protect ourselves and our customers with main deck capacity, we've made the decision that we're going to secure some of that capacity requirements through ACMI and long-term arrangements to make sure that we are not at the the mercy of, um, I would say, uh, market, but more so even the yeah, the manufacturers, because obviously we've seen tremendous delays on the Triple Seven X program, um, and the three hundred and fifty. It's a new freighter. It looks promising, uh, but you know, I would expect with any new aircraft type entering the industry, there might be some teething issues. There could be some delays. Um, so to make sure that we protect the capacity we need, um, you know, we're going down this road. Do you have any specific trade lanes where you are deploying these 747s, which three already and the two coming into, into the fleet? It would be the main trunk lanes. Um, and I would say, you know, the main you know, gateways out of the Far East, um, you know, obviously China, Hong Kong. Um, and then, of course, you know, on, on, the, on the European sector, it would be the Amsterdam, the Frankfurt, uh, the main cargo gateways and, of course, Dubai. Nadi, what is the update on the five B triple seven production freighted you ordered uh, in 2022 as part of your fleet modernization program? Two supposed to be in 2024, three in 2025. Are they going to be inducted into the into the fleet as per the plan, or are you still going to see a delay? Um, no, so they have all been delayed, uh, but now we've got some surety and some clarity in terms of the expected timelines. So the first of those five um, remaining aircrafts is being delivered uh, last week of uh, July. Uh, we have a firm date for that. Um, and then the remaining four aircrafts are going to be delivered in September, October, November. And then the last one we're looking at February. And that will complete the order of the seven that we originally ordered. Okay. And when do you think you will have the B777-300 years going for conversion with IAA's Big Twin program? So as you know, we've ordered so far initially 10 um, conversions. Um, you know, Emirates, of course, we're a sizable operator of the 777-300ER. Um, in terms of the program itself, yes, it's been delayed. Um, and that is partially also the reason why we're wet leasing uh, capacity in right. at the moment, because, you know, we had obviously a fleet plan and unfortunately these, these delays are making, providing or you know, bringing up challenges. We are still very much committed um, in terms of, you know, the program itself. Uh, we are getting regular updates from IAI uh, on the progress. Um, and yes, for various reasons, there have been delays, uh, but we are still very confident that, um, you know, the end product will be delivered. Realistically, for Emirates, we're expecting that the first aircraft would come into the fleet early, uh, first half of next year, not before that. That's what we're planning. Okay, do you have uh, all the 10 planes identified for the conversion or are they still flying for Emirates? Uh, yes, they're currently flying in our passenger operation. Um, and um, yeah, as and when the STC is received by IAI, um, then we will be able to, um, you know, to, to firm up a date um, in terms of exiting it from the passenger fleet and um, you know, bringing it over for the conversion. Yeah, we have seen the, the first customer, that's the uh, the, the the big twin in its library coming out of the the paint factory in uh, in the MRO facilities from Addis Ababa, and I think it's likely to uh, to fly in the US before it gets approval. Does that give you confidence that this program would once would be back again on track? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think obviously we've been you know, engaging with multiple stakeholders in this process, apart from IAI, and um, I think it's a question of when rather than if. Um, and you know the purpose of, for instance, flying the aircraft over to the US is actually to do um, some test flights with the FAA. Um, so again, that's a statement that you know things are progressing in the right way. Um, so again, like we're pretty confident that the SEC will will come through, uh, but it's coming a little bit later than we're, than what we were hoping for. 
is there a clarity on where you will do the conversion of uh, the triple seven three hundred ERs? Is that going to be Abu Dhabi as a facility, the Etihad facility, or will you be doing it at the Tel Aviv facility of IAI? No, it will be in Abu Dhabi with uh, with Etihad. Yep. You have the time slots booked for it, or is that? Well, because the SEC is is not clear yet. Um, you know, we we have we are in direct regular communication. Um, with with Etihad and um, yeah, as soon as the SEC is approved, then it will take us a couple of months probably to exit the aircrafts on the passenger operation, uh, and then put them into the the conversion program. Um, so you know, by that time, we expect the engineering um, at Etihad will be ready. Nadim, uh, how are you uh, realigning your network and positioning your current capacity optimally, as the demand for the main tech capacity is really really going up? Yeah, it's. Uh, so one, we are, um, you know, we're slightly different in the sense that we're a combination airline, yeah. which means that you know our capacity comes from main deck as well as um, uh, belly. Now the freighters have a twofold, um, I would say, uh, job uh, within a combination airline. One is providing main deck capacity from origin to final destination, and the other is to feed the bellies out of the hub. So you know, to give you an example, um, Hong Kong, uh, we fly thirty six times a week out of Hong Kong uh, with the triple seven freighters. Um, so that's a lot of capacity that we feed into Dubai that then gets into our belly network um, you know, to go to various destinations across the Emirates Sky network. So the growing demand on main deck, um, you know, we're, we're, we're balancing that with the requirement uh, to feed our bellies um, and also equally the requirement from our customers because um, you know, whilst um, you know, putting wide body freighters into the main gateways, for instance, in Europe um, is an option. A lot of the cargo actually you know, doesn't end up there. It goes beyond. Um, and you know, with with you know our network, um, you know, you're able to really um, go beyond those main gateways and actually go much nearer to you know the ultimate customer where you want the cargo to be delivered. So, um, you know, from that perspective, it's it's a continuously balancing act um, that we will you know probably still um, need to manage for the foreseeable future. But that's equally our strength as well. Um, you know, we're able to take a full freighter, bring it into Dubai, and then you know spread that cargo over you know multiple flights and provide a customer forty different destinations in Europe on the same day. Uh, this question, of course, is not about uh, Emirates Sky Cargo. It's generally about the air freight industry in general. I've been talking to different people and uh, they're kind of, uh, it's not an alarming, but they've been uh, seeing that there could be a challenge in terms of finding main deck capacity as we run to the to the, the last quarter of the year. Uh, it's already being felt. Uh, uh, is that something that you think that is going to be a... Uh, there's going to be a constraint on the access to main deck capacity or freighter capacity in the in the next six yeah. months, seven months. Yes, absolutely, and I think that's just you know simple math. Uh, volumes are are growing, um, and year on year we expect volumes to grow, um, and that's just you know macroeconomic conditions, I would say. Uh, but then physically, the wide body freighter uh, fleet around the globe at the moment, five fifty to six hundred. I'm talking about you know. 100 plus ton capable aircraft, so the 777, the 7400, and the 747-8. 7 there is not going to be really any significant increase in aircraft till the next gen aircraft start being delivered in 26, 27, 28. Um, so from now till then, um, there is hardly any incremental capacity coming into the market, uh, whereas you know the market is overall expected to grow continuously. So you know constraint uh, on the main deck freighter side will remain for the coming you know, foreseeable future. Um, and you know it will come with its peak and throughs. Uh, but if you ask me, it's the second half of this year. I think main deck capacity will be uh, yeah will be tight for sure. Do you expect also a kind of pressure on the rates as well? Absolutely, there's mar normal market dynamics. Um, you know, supply and demand, and you know that's something that that I think m most of um, our customers are expecting as well. Hence, so we we do see a clear trend where um, you know when we're now negotiating renewal of contracts, uh, people are are willing and able to commit to longer terms just because they also see a foreseeable risk when it comes to securing capacity. Uh, rate is is one element, uh, but actually having the capacity is is a bigger concern, um, I think, in general for, for many of our customers. So people are locking up capacity to make sure that they have um, access to their capacity for the long term. Do you also see that the cargo coming from e-commerce channels are actually disrupting the kind of traditional models of uh, freight forwarding cargo carriers? Uh, is, there a, is there a kind of significant change in the, in the model and how it impacts the access to main deck capacity and the importance of main deck capacity in the global trade? I think it has had an impact, uh, but I think it's generally, 
you know, like what we see with anything new entering the industry. Uh, it's a new, perhaps, type of a product, you can call it. But for us as an airline, we don't necessarily differentiate. Um, you know, for us, um, you know, it's still capacity that we have available to the market and that we sell to our customers. How that capacity then gets utilized, whether it's a traditional air cargo, general freight, or whether it's express or whether it's e-commerce, um, you know, that's something that the market determines. Uh, but absolutely, e-commerce, of course, is now a major component um, in terms of global air freight volumes. Um, you know, a lot of, of course, uncertainty around, you know, is it going to stay? Um, you know, will it perhaps disappear overnight someday? Um, you know, I think, um, you know, the opinions are, are, are different uh, depending on who you talk to. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a big significant component now in terms of um, you know, capacity requirements out of especially constrained markets like China and, and Hong Kong. Nadimi, you're a freighter man. Um, you dealt with the different types of freighters and different roles in the past. Uh, going forward, uh, how significant this main deck capacity of freighters to global trade? We have seen it in the past during the pandemic, how important, strategically important freighters were to airlines. Uh, of course, cargo was important to every airline because that brought in the cash flows. Uh, but purely pure freighters, how important are global trade, particularly in a scenario where global risk like geopolitics, things can actually man-made disasters and disasters of various types bring in opportunities and the importance that freighters play. I think freighters have always been important and, and I think they will remain important. Um, you know, the, the volumes, um, you know, that the freighters carry, uh, frankly speaking, you know, the bellies, you know, you could not cope with that. Um, and again, if you just lo look at the main gateways and the main trade trunk lanes where air freight moves from, um, you know, if you take out the freighters, um, you know, that capacity, you know, you could not, um, you know, meet. Uh, in terms of uh, requirement uh, based on belly you know, capacity. So I think the freighters are there to stay. Um, I think um, the other component that we're seeing more and more is, of course, constraint in, in major airports around slots. Um, you know, you take, you know, the examples of Heathrow and Amsterdam, for instance, um, you know, to get slots to operate passenger services is difficult, let alone uh, for all cargo flights. Um, so there is a push um, that freighters are, are moving to secondary airports um, and again, that will again require freight is uh, because it's you know it's it's of course easier to move uh, freight through a secondary airport than it is passengers, and then you know thirdly what you mentioned about geopolitics um, you know that's, that's of course a reality that we're we're seeing, um, you know f I would say production uh, can move around the world, um, and then obviously it's easier to redeploy a freight on a on a particular uh, destination than it would be to build a passenger network to then you know cater for you know the requirement that that cargo brings. Uh, when that production shifts. So, um, no, I think uh, realistically, um, you know, freighters are are an important component when it comes to global air freight. Um, you know, they're, I think, you know, around 2,000 odd today. Um, and, you know, depending on who you talk to, but, you know, all the industry peers, I think, you know, agree that, you know, that 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 fleet is expected to glow, double at least by 2040. I mean, wide body, you know, freighters are going to be uh, there to stay. They're a real requirement. And I think, um, you know, when there are, these one-off disruptions um, happening, um, you know, then the importance gets even more highlighted. But uh, yeah, it's it's an integral part in air freight. Nadim, thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure talking to you. Always, likewise. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.